The Cave and Cliffs update has arrived, and it's bonkers. It's totally nuts. I can't remember a Minecraft update that's released that has this many features inside of it, and so many game-changing features as well. This is, this is a really big one. And clearly, I'm not the only person that feels this way because the community has been going wild as well. I've been reading through all the Twitter responses, and everyone's going nuts, which is great. I can't wait to start playing around with snapshots, and I can't wait for the final release. But for the time being, you know, we don't have any of these features to play around with, so I thought it would be interesting to just. Talk about them a little bit, talk about how I feel about them, and the best way to do that in 2020 on YouTube is of course to whip out the old tier list. Modern Minecraft updates require modern discussion solutions. Now the first update that's been announced is mountains. Now this is a big change to terrain generation, and I'm incredibly excited for it. I mean the idea of more extreme terrain in Minecraft definitely has me excited, but currently we have absolutely no footage of it, so it's going to have to go in tier C. Now this is Mumbo while editing the video, having just found a screenshot of what the mountains are actually going to look like, yet that's being bumped up to top tier. How did I not see that during the live stream? That's wild. We do, however, have plenty of footage of this little guy, the Mountain Goat. Now, he was voted in at the previous Minecon live event, and he seems pretty cool. He can jump like a madman, and also the attack mechanic is interesting. I just love the idea of a hidden goat trap. You know, a piston drops down, and then a goat comes flying out from behind a wall. I don't know if that's going to be possible, but if it is, he probably deserves to be in a higher tier, but for now, tier B. Snowy or snow? or powdered snow is going to generate on top of mountains and it means that when you're exploring mountains you're going to have to be careful because if you step on this powdered snow you're actually going to drop through into a trap. For now I'm going to put it in tier E because I can just see myself falling into it and dying. The lush caves. The lush caves were one of the many new cave types that have been introduced in the cave and cliffs update and they look great. They are... It's exactly what I wanted Mojang to do with caves. Like, if I imagined a cave update, that's the sort of thing that I was hoping for. The overgrowth, the bringing life into them, stopping them being so stony and actually adding vegetation. This is definitely top tier stuff. I I I'm loving it. And with the Lush Caves, there's a bunch of new block types that have been introduced. Now, the first thing that I noticed while I was watching the Lush Caves is the new grass carpets. I mean, they're not necessarily called grass carpets, but I just love the idea of being able to hide light sources underneath them in my grassy areas. For that reason alone, once again, top tier stuff. My lawn will now be nice and torch and also mob free. The glow berries, first off, look really cool. I look forward to using them in my builds. It's a nice way to get a light source in overgrown areas and things, but also introduces an interesting new game mechanic in which we have a growing farmable light source like it's a light source that actually grows i don't think we've ever had that before tier a the spore blossom has me excited mainly because it's a particle emitter so we're going to be able to put that down and it will start emitting particles around it so that's going to be great for adding atmosphere into builds you know what i was going to put it in tier a but i'm actually thinking that's some top tier stuff i'm also a massive fan of this drip leaf plant i'm very curious to see if mobs can spawn on it because if they can that will lead to the most interesting and wild and weird looking mob farms possible. <laughs> For now, I'm going to put it in tier A. Oh, and if you're unfamiliar with what the drip leaf plant does, it's essentially a block that you can stand on that gradually decays and then eventually you fall through it after a certain amount of time. It's very cool. The azaleas, I think that's how you say it, are little plants that grow in the lush caves. Now, I must admit, they look gorgeous they look they look really adorable they're very sweet but for the time being i can't really see any crazy use for them so i'm gonna put them in tier c but i want to make it very clear that they are very pretty they definitely add to the lush caves i'm a fan okay but i'm a bit of an engineer you know and when i don't have an obvious use for something it starts dropping down my list and this of course feels like a good time to mention that this is all my personal opinion and I haven't actually played with any of these new features yet, so I'm sure when they actually get introduced, certain things will get switched around. Anyway, next up, we have got the Mega Cave. Now, I don't have to play with the Mega Cave to know that I love the Mega Cave. I mean, I did see it and think, gosh, it's going to be difficult to light up the caves for my mob farms and things, but I don't care, because the Mega Cave is mega. Local water level sounds like a bit of a technical feature, but it essentially means that different caves have different water levels, and that will lead to waterfalls, and it will lead to certain parts of the cave systems being totally underwater. It's definitely going to add some variety to caving. It's going to make it harder to find resources, but I actually think that's a good thing. Tier A. And when it comes to adding variety into caving, the Dripstone Caves definitely will. They look wild. Did not expect that sort of thing being added into Minecraft, and for that reason alone, tier A. It just, it, it came out of nowhere. Now inside these dripstone caves, we've got stalactites and we've got stalagmites. Stalactites hang down from the ceiling, and it showed in the video that they can actually drop, and they will cause damage. Now that instantly brings up ideas of redstone traps, which means that... 
it's a fairly high tier, but the stalagmites are even more interesting to me because in the video clip, it shows a zombie dropping off a very small ledge and it dies. So that could mean that we have a new way of killing mobs inside of mob farms that could potentially be more efficient. For that reason, top tier stuff. Skulk growths are another introduction into caves and they're a scary one. They're, they're mildly horrifying, okay? They happen right at the depths, so in the lower Y levels and on their own, I would say potentially tier B. You know, it's a nice bit of variety, a little bit creepy, but because of what's in them, 100% top tier. So the whole point of these skulk growths is it's so dark that things don't see. Instead, they hear, and that introduces a new redstone component, which is the skulk sensor. Now, this thing is going to detect sounds. So when you place down a block, that's a sound. This thing is going to detect it. When you walk past, okay, this thing is going to detect it. And if you activate a redstone component, this thing is going to detect it, which means that we now have wireless redstone in Minecraft, which is words that I never ever thought I'd be saying. And it also has some interesting features like wool occlusion. So if you surround it in wool and then leave one block missing, it will only hear things from that direction. So it means that we can actually be a little bit accurate with these things. They're not just like a blunt hammer. I feel like I got that saying wrong. I mean, surely you want your hammer to be blunt? I don't know what I'm talking about. But believe it or not, this isn't actually the thing that I'm most excited about inside these skulk growths. Because I think we've got one of the most interesting new mobs introduced into Minecraft ever, to be honest with you. Genuinely, I was not expecting this at all. It, it kind of took my breath away a little bit. And I know that sounds incredibly cheesy. And I know my girlfriend is going to watch this and she's going to laugh at me later. But th those are my thoughts, you know. So this is a mob that can't see you. Instead, it hears you. So you have to sneak around it. Now, if you make any noise, that noise then gets sent in kind of like a particle to its antlers. And they rattle. And it just makes this incredibly sinister and creepy noise. And it's just wild. It's not something I ever expected to see in Minecraft, and I'm all for it. I think it's I think it's awesome. If there was a tier above top tier, it would be there. Now, I couldn't help but notice in the warden clip that the walls were made of a new type of stone brick, which is, that's cool. That's definitely tier B. I also noticed some candle action going on. That's a welcome addition to the game. I've always felt like Minecraft deserved some candles, especially for those of you who love building it in a medieval style. It's going to add some atmosphere. So, tier B. Next up, we've got these amethyst crystals, and these are definitely very interesting to me because they actually grow inside these things called amethyst geodes. Now, these amethyst geodes are essentially like mob dungeons. You know, you've got like a mob spawner and you can't really move the mob spawner. Well, the way the developer explained it is it's like that. So, these amethyst geodes, you can't actually move them. When you break them, I guess you won't get the item. So, you can only grow amethyst crystals where the amethyst geode originally spawned. And just to be clear, the amethyst geode isn't a specific block, it's actually a whole structure and the crystals grow inside of it, which means we're definitely gonna have some interesting farms. And importantly, they are location specific farms. They can't just be built anywhere, you actually have to travel to them. And I love that sort of thing. And for that reason, even though I'm not entirely sure how useful the amethyst crystals are, I have high hopes, so they're going in top tier. Now, one of the uses for the crystals is the crafting of a telescope. Now, the telescope essentially works like the Optivine Zoom, except you get a pretty heavy vignette where it looks like you're looking through a telescope. Imagine looking through a telescope, that's what looking through a Minecraft telescope looks like. Now, obviously, I use Optifine, so that means that I can zoom in and I can use the zoom feature, which essentially makes the telescope a little bit redundant for me. However, Optifine is a mod. So that would be like me saying, well, the skulk sensor isn't really that useful because wireless redstone mods exist. I can't really say that. I would say it belongs in tier A. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Next up, we have copper. Now, copper brings with it a handful of new interesting features. So first off, ore generation is different for copper. That's pretty cool. It also has all the slabs and stairs variants, which is always nice to see, especially in a metallic block. And then finally, it actually shows its age. So if I was to build a copper roof, it would go from being the coppery orange color and then it would begin to oxidize and then eventually it would go fully green. And I love the idea of Minecraft builds and she's showing their age. I think that's a really, really cool game mechanic. Not something that we've seen before and it's something that I want to see more often for that reason top tier stuff. Now, one of the uses for copper is the lightning rod. And if you play with fire tick on, this thing's going to be your friend. And if you play with fire tick on and you've got a wooden roof, then it's going to be your best friend ever. Okay, because this is going to attract lightning and it's going to divert it from your builds, 
which definitely comes in handy for a number of things. I mean, I've got a villager trading hall that occasionally gets struck by lightning. My villagers get turned into witches. It's a whole horrible scene. I don't want that. So for that reason, I mean, I can't, I can't keep putting things in the top tier, but it feels like this deserves to be in the top tier. Uh, you no, know, tier A, okay? We're going to put it in tier A. But we are about to get another addition to the top tier, and that is bundles. Bundles is the inventory management system that we've all been asking for and we've always wondered how they were going to do it you know because over the past minecraft updates as they start adding more and more items the inventory just keeps overflowing and overflowing and these bundles it's perfectly done you know it's such a balanced and minecrafty way of doing it it just fits in it fits in perfectly with the game so you know what it might even it might even belong up here you know, it's, it's going one above. Now this one, the brush, came right out of left field. This is not something that I ever expected to see. But we now have archaeology dig sites in Minecraft. And we got this new item called the brush, which allows us to slowly and very carefully look for valuable items inside of blocks. It's totally wild. Like, that's just definitely top tier. And also the archaeological dig sites as well. They definitely belong in the top tier too, just because... It's an interesting new structure that once again came out of left field, but also it gives players who have just started a world potentially a way to get valuable resources without actually mining. So it's like a different strategy. Now one of the things that you can find at these archaeological dig sites is clay fragments, and these actually have art on them, and you can put these together to form your own customised clay pot that you then fire over a literal fire, and then it's your own, it's like sealed in place. Which is wild. You know, a completely new game mechanic once again. I feel like I want to put it in top tier, but once again I feel like I can't, so it's going in tier A. The Oxalotl though is 100% going in the top tier. Not only is it absolutely adorable, but also it's going to help me fight Drowned. You know, Drowned are like the bane of my life. As soon as I touch the water, I'm surrounded by them. So if I can get a squad of these guys following me, then yeah, 100% I'm all for it. And as far as I'm concerned, that is the only aquatic mob that has been introduced in this update, because... I mean, the glow squid just doesn't even doesn't even exist to me. You know, I'm just going to ignore its existence. The isologer would have been so cool. Ice attacks, stuff, new things, and you went for a squid that doesn't even glow. It just has. It just just. Ah, oh, never been so disappointed with the community in my life. It's a hard Z, and I'm sorry to end on a sad note, but I will. I, I, I will. I hope you enjoyed. It's been fun. <laughs> this update is wild. I mean, look at that top tier. <laughs> look at the top tier. It's it's ridiculous. Awesome. Minecraft 1.17 is going to be a wild one, and I'll catch you over there. That makes it sound like I'm not going to make another video until Minecraft 1.17 comes out, and they said that it's going to be summer 2021. No, don't worry, okay? I'm going to keep making videos, all right? But then I will also catch you over there, okay? So I'm going to catch you in Minecraft 1.16 for now, okay? And I'm going to keep catching you in Minecraft 1.16 for, like, the next, you know, 12 months. But then, then I'll catch you in Minecraft 1.17. Yeah, I think that makes sense.